So we're going to take a look at some uh, viral TikTok videos. And since gun control is once again, well, shouldn't even be the, con the topic of conversation. So we're going to take a look at some gun control TikToks to see if uh, maybe they make some good arguments. Listen, we've tried to hear them out over on TikTok on many different issues, but we've uh, never really checked to see what they have to say about guns. And maybe it's really intelligent and insightful. You never know. So we'll just start at the top. My opinions are just as important as those who were born before me. I know I am young, but I know what I'm saying. I'm sick of your thoughts and I'm sick of your praying. Children are being slaughtered in numbers. Mothers and fathers losing sons and daughters. We blame the Muslims and the Jewish instead of the ones who actually do it. This song is an attack. It's a eulogy in the memory of those now living. A proclamation to the older generation that doesn't understand that the Second Amendment isn't protection. It's a death sentence. The defendant's a gun and the convicted is innocent. It's ironic. Isn't it a country more loyal to a law made in 1790? So we're gonna take a look at some gun control TikToks to see if uh, maybe they make some good arguments. This is a war where weapons will get the job done unless we do something. Kids, it's time to learn to run. It could be worse. You know, if, you'd, if I had known going in, if you had told me that this is a TikTok anti-gun rap with a ukulele, uh, I would have imagined something a little bit worse than that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'll give you that. Like it's, it's, it, it, it actually, it manages to get over the bar where I would have said it. Not saying much, but uh, at least it rhymes, you know, at least it rhymes. So uh, I'll, I'll give it that. And the other thing too is, is when it comes to the, the gun control topic, for me, it's a little bit different from some of these other subjects. When I see someone like this, it's a young girl who, in her mind, the way to stop shootings is to take away everyone's guns. She has a line in there about uh, the country is led by a hand with a gun. It's extremely naive and childish. And so I, I, I can understand, if you're naive and childish, why you would think that the way to solve all these problems is to just take away everyone's guns and that's it. If you're a, a young, naive person, uh, it's hard for me to even get mad at you for, for believing that because it's just a young, childish kind of view of things where you don't understand how the world works. I am much angrier at adults who absolutely know better or should know better. There's no excuse for you to be that naive or to pretend to be that naive. When I hear some, I don't know how, that, how old the kid is, but when I hear some like 17 year old say, well, uh, if we want to stop people from being murdered, can't we just take guns away? That's a terrible idea. We don't want to be a country led by a hand with a gun. Well, that's how every country is led. That's every country, okay? Violence, evil, okay? These things exist in the world. They always have. Even before guns existed, they, that certainly existed. Violence and evil. It's always there. It's, it's not ever going to go away. So if you come up with a solution that hinges on sort of the assumption that we'll be able to extinguish evil and violence entirely, then it's not a good solution. Because any kind of gun confiscation, abolishing the Second Amendment, getting rid of the guns, that solution only works if it's accompanied by curing all evil and violence in the world as well. So if you can get rid of all the bad guys, okay, no more evil, no more bad guys, nobody would wish us harm. If all of them are gone forever, um, that's the only way that we could even talk about getting rid of guns. But that's never going to happen. In the not too distant past, private citizens used to be largely that, if you can imagine, private. What's changed? Well, the internet changed. Think about everything you've ever searched for, watched, or tweeted on the internet. Now imagine all of that data being crawled through, collected, and aggregated by third parties into permanent public records. To keep my data private when I go online, I use ExpressVPN. There are hundreds of data brokers out there whose sole business involves buying and selling your data. They don't even have to tell you who they're selling it to or get your consent either. One of these data points is your IP address. Data harvesters use your IP to uniquely identify you and your physical location, but you can mask your IP address with ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes my connection through an encrypted server that makes it more difficult for third parties to find me. If it sounds complicated, it's not, because all you have to do is just tap one button on the app and then you're protected. So if, like me, you believe that your data is your business, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market, Use my link expressvpn.com slash WalshYT to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash WalshYT.
Hello, I am Thomas. Oh, Tommy J, back from the dead. What's up, dude? I'm just visiting posterity to see how the United States are doing. Well, dude, you can't get much better than greatest country on earth. Wonderful. So what new and improved constitutions have you composed with the progresses of the human mind in the past two centuries? What are you talking about? We still got the constitution. Yes, but which one? What do you mean, which one? The Constitution. You ought to know, you wrote it, dude. Well, no, it was largely in Madison. I was actually in France. Wait, you're still using the Constitution from 235 years ago? Well, obviously, Tom, it's the best document ever. Well, I mean, only number two behind the Bible. Well, only after one takes out all that mythical nonsense with the miracles and the resurrection. But, but hold on a minute. Did you not read that I suggested redrafting a Constitution about every 19 years? What? Institutions must advance to keep pace with the times. Surely you must have penned new documents with which to govern. Nah, dude, the Second Amendment is perfect just as it is. So you have a well-regulated militia providing security for the free state. Do what now? A militia that is well-regulated. What are you talking about? No, guns, Tom. We get to have guns. Well, no, that's not what it's... It's to provide a well-regulated militia that shall... No, 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 dude. It's about if someone breaks into my house, I'm going to win the... Oh, please, make it stop. What is an AR-15? Oh, Tom, you don't know. It is a sexy weapon. With one of those, I can mow down your entire well-segregated militia with those <laughs> muskets you guys had. Dude, check it out. It appears that my hope, speaking of being naive, my hope that maybe on the gun issue... TikTok would be more thoughtful. That, that hope may have been in vain, perhaps. So here, this is just, it's just a, it is a longer, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more creatively presented version of the same argument we've heard a million. It's, it's honestly really the weakest argument, we, the weakest gun control argument. They're all weak. Uh, this idea that, well, uh, the people, our founding fathers, the people who drafted the Constitution, uh, they, they had no idea that these kinds of guns would exist and, and uh, they, they didn't know about modern weaponry and if they had, it would have changed everything. I mean, that argument, it doesn't even get off the ground. The people who make the argument are constantly claiming constitutional rights that our founding fathers certainly never would have ever conceived of. Inconceivable. Our founding fathers did enshrine and codify into law our right to own firearms. Now, it's true, they didn't have a crystal ball, they couldn't see into the future to see what exactly a firearm would look like in the year 2023. Although, these were intelligent men, and so they knew that technology progresses. I don't think they'd be shocked by that. I don't think they'd be shocked by the concept, right? And yet they enshrined that right anyway. So that probably tells us everything we need to know. This weapon is your life. What the left is claiming is that the, the development of those arms now somehow overrides the basic principle, which is absurd. Meanwhile, they're trying to invent basic principles and put them into the minds of the founding fathers, even though they certainly never imagined that. We hear the claim that uh, the left believes the right to an abortion is constitutional. So it's a basic human right, constitutional right. Really? That's, so you think that's what, is that what Thomas Jefferson had in mind? No. So let's, let's do the same skit with Thomas Jefferson, finding out in the future they would determine that somehow buried in there in the Bill of Rights is, is a mother's right to kill her child. So can we play out that exact same scenario where we're explaining to Thomas Jefferson, oh yeah, you know that right that you gave mothers to kill their children? You know that right? No, no you, you meant to put that. That's in there, isn't it? Trans rights? Okay, let's explain trans rights to Thomas Jefferson. Let's see how he feels about that. Oh, you know the right, uh, no, it's the right of, um, of men to pretend to be women and to have uh, their fantasies affirmed by society. You know that, right? Uh, you know, it's the, the fundamental human right that you enshrined uh, constitutionally for men to disrobe in women's locker rooms. Then you mean you put that in there, didn't you? Absolutely not. Now, in all those cases, they damn well know that our founding fathers would have would have cried out in horror at the notion that uh, that these would ever be considered rights, much less constitutional rights. But there, they're willing to say, well, it doesn't matter. It's, who cares what they thought anyway? They're a bunch of old, they don't know what they're talking about. But on this, when it comes to gun rights, they say, well, they never intended that to begin with. We must get back to the original intentions. It was really supposed to just be militias and nothing else. They're carrying muskets, that's all, they, that's all they meant. Let me get this straight. You're not gonna wear a mask in a pandemic because God will protect you, okay? Then why do you need a gun? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Get that off the screen. I can't deal with the smug look. 
I can't deal with the smug look after they say the dumbest shit that you've ever heard. It's one thing to hear the dumb, but then the smug, like they're so impressed with themselves that they just made this point that's incredibly stupid. Well, you say a mask that God will protect you. Nobody said that. Who? And, and by the way, so this was a this was a, a video from a couple of years ago. That woman, it's almost certain that if we check in with her now, she's not wearing a mask. So of course, the anti-mask people, they were right about everything. We were right about everything. But back in the time when this is something we had to argue about, nobody was saying, oh, I don't wear a mask because God will protect me from the viruses. That's not what anyone said. That's not what anyone said. We were all aware that sicknesses exist and we can still get them. And uh, that's just part of this fallen world. Like we all knew that. Our point about the mask was always that they're useless, that they're pointless, that you have no right to require us to wear them. Uh, that, you know, the, the, the risks involved in going out in public and potentially picking up a sickness, we always knew about that. That's always existed. Uh, it's worth the risk to just live as normal human beings, being able to see people's faces and show our faces in public and live as normal people. It's worth the risk of, like, catching a cold. Those were our arguments, not what she said. That's as much as I could tolerate. I made it through almost 15 minutes.